Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about window installation best practices. I'm Rob Campbell, this is Bryant Coogan. Bryant is our in-house expert on WRB systems and business development manager for Ring Zen. Thanks Rob, I appreciate that. Um, like Rob said, we're going to be talking about a couple different things uh, today. One, what are the different types of weather resistant barriers that are out in the field when we're building our homes? Uh, two, also the install best practices for Marvin Elevate windows. Before I get onto site, or once I get onto site, excuse me, uh, one thing I like to look at is what type of sheathing are we using? What type of weather resistant barrier are we going to be using? And again, who is the window manufacturer? This is really going to help us understand how to install that window and also what type of window and door flashings and sealants that we're going to need to use while installing that window as well. We always want to make sure that we follow the install best practices of the window manufacturer to ensure that there is a warranted application. We also want to make sure that we understand uh, the weather resistant barrier install best practices as well to ensure a warranted application with that as well. We always want to understand what we're using, one for sheathing and weather resistant barrier, right? Zip system actually is very interesting in the fact that it's an integrated weather resistant barrier system where it has your sheeting for your building and your quote unquote house wrap or weather resistant barrier system built into the, the system itself. A lot of people like this because you kill two birds with one stone and they love it because the ease of install when it comes to framing a building and it makes it really, really quick to get the job done. Now zip system offers a bunch of different boards that we can use on the actual building themselves. The one that you see here is the half inch sheathing product that can be used on the roof and the wall, which is really nice as well. One skew for the whole entire building. One thing that we want to point out is, yes, the weather resistant barrier is already on the actual product itself, but it's very, very important, just like a traditional house wrap, to make sure that we tape our seams. And if you look over by Rob, he has a very perfect seam that we can point out and show you guys exactly how to install this. Now what we're using here is Zip Systems 3 and 3 quarter sheathing tape. This is an acrylic adhesive, so again, it allows to be stuck down to really cold temperatures and it will stick to a lot of different construction surfaces. And if you notice, on the actual board itself, there's dotted lines. This is going to help us with proper alignment for sticking the tape to the actual sheathing itself. <laughs> Now that Brian supplied our tape, he's going to roll it to make sure it has proper adhesion to the sheathing. Now one thing you're going to notice with the zip roller specifically is they actually have built-in Z's into the roller itself. This will ensure that you have appropriate pressure on the tape to allow it to adhere to the substrate and what they call wet into the actual substrate itself. Brian, tell us a couple more things about the features and benefits of Zip System uh, beyond just the ease of installation uh, and weather sealing. Absolutely. Rob, like you said, the ease of install is very important to a lot of our contractors out in the field. And they've done a really great job with the design of the board and actually marking out on the board where to fasten it. One thing I want to point out first is on a 4x8 or 4x10 sheet that they make, or even 4x9, they have a unique edge on the eight foot side of the actual board itself. So when we're stacking boards like you see here on the wall, it automatically spaces and gives proper spacing for an eighth inch gap uh, like you would have to do manually with a nail on traditional sheathing. The other thing that you notice on this piece right here, you're gonna see squares and circles. The squares and circles show you specifically where you should be fastening the board to the wall. The squares will denote 24 on center, and the circles will show you 16 on center fastening for your boards when you're applying them to the framing of that building. Another thing we want to point out or make sure that we do when we're installing this product is um, to ensure it's structurally going to be sound and the weather resistant barrier is going to be upheld. When we're putting this on, we want to make sure that we're tuning our guns appropriately to get the fasteners what they call snug and flush to the surface. So we keep all the water out and we also make sure that we uphold their structural one rating on the actual wall itself. So just a couple features and benefits about the zip system itself. We talked about the ease of install, the tape, applying the tape, how to fasten it and things like that. Uh, zip like we said, has a couple different boards. They have a green board, which is 7 16 board. They have two red boards, a half-inch board, which we see here, and then a 5 8 board as well. They come four foot 
by eight foot, four foot by nine foot, and four foot by 10 foot. The red boards can be used both on the sidewall and the roof. Uh, one thing that we always want to keep in mind when we're choosing a weather resistant barrier product to be used on the building is to ensure that it's what they call vapor permeable or breathable. Zip system itself is about a 12 to 16 perm. It really depends on the board itself because it has a bunch of adhesives and everything that they use to make it structurally sound. Uh, but that's very important because that's right in the sweet spot of where we want to make sure our house is breathable or vapor permeable itself. Um, it can be left to the weather for six months without having to be covered up, which is really nice, especially up here in the New England weather. If we run into issues where we have tons of snow and we can't get to the job site, we don't have to worry about that degrading or the, or the house being exposed to the elements. This is gonna do everything for you all in one step, which is really, really nice. To find out a little bit more about Zip System and all the different options that they have for us, uh, get a hold of your local Rings End branch and we can get you in touch with our manufacturer partner as well. Now that we've gone through the features and benefits of Zip System, let's make sure we have the correct products to get our opening ready to install a window. Brian, you wanna walk us through what we've got here? Yeah, Rob, I always wanna make sure that I go through a, a little bit of a checklist when I'm on site to ensure that we have everything that you, we need, like you said. First things first, I wanna make sure that we have the proper flashing tapes. One tape that we're gonna be using today is Zip Stretch Tape. This comes in six inch and 10 inch, depending on if you're using two by four or two by six wall framing. Another product we wanna ensure that we have is the zip tape. This is their three and three quarter zip tape that can be used on the legs and the header of the window. It also comes in a six inch tape as well, depending on the detailing around the window itself. Another product we always wanna make sure we have on site is a zip roller to apply that pressure to the tape. And per window manufacturer's best practices, we wanna ensure that we have the appropriate sealant that coincides with their requirements as well. So another thing we wanna to touch on that we didn't touch on with the traditional house wrap video is with non-traditional products like a zip system or what we're gonna talk about later on down the road with a blue skin or fully adhered house wraps is the prep of the window opening itself. There's a couple different ways that are acceptable right now to prep a window opening. As you saw in an earlier video, we wrapped the actual house wrap into the rough opening itself. Uh, there's a couple different schools of thought that say you don't need to do that. Or there's also other schools of thought that say, let's cut the house wrap back about two inches itself. With Zip System, it's really unique. They do give you the option to go ahead and do what they call the flush cut method. Um, if you are looking for additional air sealing or just feel more comfortable with having the actual rough opening covered, we can go ahead and use their flashing tape to go ahead and make sure that we start on the outside and wrap it in. So depending on your comfort level or school of thought that you prefer, uh, they do give you the opportunity to use either their four inch or their six inch flashing tape to go ahead and run it minimum two inches onto the outside and wrap it in. If you do it that method, it actually helps air seal here and gives a little extra protection. Or you can bump it up to their six inch flashing product to make sure that we're covering the majority of the rough opening itself. Like we talked about, we taped all of our seams. Not only is this really important to make sure that we keep the moisture out of the building. In today's world, there's a lot of building codes that are forcing us to be more energy efficient in the building. By using SIP system in this all-in-one system, you can make your house watertight, but also make sure that we're complying with the codes and helping us beat what they call a blower door test with this product itself. Now that we reviewed the different types of rough openings, flush cut or folding it in, we're now we're ready to really prep this window opening. As you can see, this has moved a lot faster than our traditional house wrap. And Rob, before we put our piece of bevel, can you make sure that you apply the sealant appropriately to that window sill? There's multiple ways that you can adhere your piece of bevel siding to the rough sill. You may see a zigzag pattern. You can also do a couple straight lines. Really, we're just looking to tack this in place. So now that we have our beveled siding installed to give us a slope to allow any potential moisture that got into the window opening out, we want to install our stretch tape over that rough opening as well. Um, per code, they want us to go ahead and bring our stretch tape or our windowsill pan flash a minimum six inches up on either side of the jam, and Rob's going to mark that out for us right now. So 
Something you may notice about the opening that we're working with, we have engineered studs in this wall cavity. This is Timber Strand LSL from Trust Choice. Uh, it's a great product because it's strong, straight, and very stable. Great way to build a house, minimal shrinkage uh, with a sustainably sourced uh, material. And now we're ready to flash our windowsill pan. As you can see, we're using the 10 inch zip stretch tape because we're doing two by six construction on this one. So as you saw during the install of the impermeable windowsill pan, Zip Stretch Tape is actually a very fantastic product. There's other tapes out there in the market that are flex wraps. This is a true stretch tape, which allows it to be stretched in multi-directions, which allows for much easier install and allowing us to get nice tight corners as you see right here with the windowsill pan itself. Now that Brian's done installing our sill pan, we're ready to put the window in. You can see how much faster this was than a conventional wall frame system with a conventional WRB. A couple things we need to do to, to finish preparing this opening. We're going to run a bead of sealant around the opening, about a half inch off of the RO. We're going to space, just like on the other window, three quarters from each corner. What Bryant has here are a couple shims. We're going to level out our rough sill that we have pitched forward to the exterior. This is going to allow us to have an even surface for us to set our window in and also give us enough space to allow for any air flow or drainage of water that potentially could get into that rough opening itself. Now that we're ready to install our window, we need to unpackage our window. Here to talk a little bit about Marvin windows and unpacking our windows and some things to look for is Kathy Langen. Kathy is our education coordinator here at Rings End and somewhat of a subject matter expert on windows and doors. Kathy, could you tell us a little bit about what to look for as we unpack our window? Sure, Rob. Now, once the window is ready to go in, everyone's excited. You just want to get the plastic off, get the cardboard off, and get that window in an opening. But it's really important to be careful and to, and to look for a few things prior to installing the window. So now, Rob, Rob's going to take the plastic off this window. And one thing that is very important to always keep in mind when you're using a utility knife near a window is that you don't want to damage anything on the window. So best practice would be to remove the plastic on the side where you have the cardboard as your buffer. So Rob's going to do that. And once the plastic is off, um, you can see there he's being very careful not to cut through because you don't want, as I mentioned, anything sharp to touch the window. And now this window, this is a Marvin Elevate window. And here, this particular window, we have our screen right here. And then there's these straps. We do need to take these shipping straps off so we can remove the cardboard. And you notice Rob's doing that where the knife is nowhere near the screens. And, and Marvin does a very good job of packing their windows to help prevent any type of shipping damage. Uh, so we need to remove all the cardboard that's surrounding the window. So now we have all the cardboard removed from the window. So now there's a few things we need to do prior to getting this window in the opening. The first I would recommend to do is to remove the screens because screens can be damaged during construction, get dirty, and it's very important to get that screen out of the way and have it in a safe place so it doesn't get damaged. So there's little pins in the corners. As you can see, Rob is open the lower sash. To get those out, now he's going to close the sash. There we go. We're going to put this in a safe place so it's out of the way. Now that we have the screen out of the way, now we're going to think about other things that need to happen here. So we've removed the screen. What else on this window would we remove? Well, this happens to be a double hung window, so the hardware is already attached. But if you were to have a casement window or an awning window, there would be a package of hardware that would be taped to the window. So that would need to be removed and as well put in a safe place, collect all the hardware, put in a bucket, just put it somewhere so it's out of the way and safe so that when time comes to install all the hardware, you know where everything is. So here we, on the side of the window, this is an Elevate window. On the side of the window, there will always be stapled these corner gaskets. And these are very important to keep track of. 
These are used as part of the installation of the window, so you do not want to lose these. So these as well as the screen and the hardware should be put in a safe spot. So now we've talked about things that need to be removed from the window. We've removed the screen, we've removed the corner gaskets, and we've removed any hardware that's been taped to the window. Now we're going to talk about things to leave. We want to leave the labels on the windows for now because you'll see this label here has all the energy information that might be pertinent to use for the building official, uh, for energy codes. So you want to leave that label on as well as any other labels that are on there now. There could be labels that show how to operate the hardware, how to tilt in the sash, and those things will be necessary as the project moves on. So we're going to leave our, label, our labels on for now, but we do need to remember that once we get the window in the opening and the window has been installed, the, it, the windows have been inspected, then is the time to take the labels off. And you're going to want to remove the labels when there is no sun beating on that window because what will happen is if there is glue on a label, that sun will soften it and it'll be really hard to take off. And you should be able to take all the labels off with just Windex or soap and water. It may take a little bit of time, but never use anything sharp to scrape the labels off. So another thing in looking at the window that we want to leave for now are you'll see here these little red pieces here. Those are shipping blocks, and that's letting you know that they are there. Um, you never remove the shipping blocks, or if there was any type of strapping wrapped around the actual window, that you want to leave in place until the window is in place because that has been put there by Marvin to help prevent damage during shipping, which also will aid you in the installation of the window. Okay, so now we've talked about things that we need to leave on the window and things to remove from the window. Now we're going to take a good look at the window because now is the time to go over this window and look for any hidden damage that may have happened during shipping. Even though windows are packed really well and they, there's the plastic and the cardboard, there could be some damage and you want to find it now. So what you're going to do is you're going to look over the window, look for any type of dings, damage, uh, cracks in the glass. Now is the time to address that. And what you will need to do if you find any damage is here in the corners, in one of the upper corners on the Marvin windows, you'll see a little etching in the glass. I recommend you take a photo of the etching because then you can blow it up and you can write the numbers off it. Those numbers that are in the etching tell you everything, well, will tell Marvin everything about that window. What order it was, what line item it was, what type of window, all the information they need to then do what needs to be done to uh, correct any damage. Also take photos of any damage. So you're going to want photos of the damage, photos of the etching in the glass, and on the packing material, if you can find any labels or anything, it wouldn't hurt to have that as well as a backup. So now that we've unpacked the window, we're ready to install. So we're going to move this window out of the way. Brian's going to come back over here and we're going to talk about preparing this opening to install this window. Thank you for all the information, Kathy. We'll see you again in a little bit. You're welcome. We'll see you soon. As we go through our checklist of things that we want to do to in ensure proper installation, we want to check to make sure our window is properly sized to the rough opening before we apply sealant and install the window. We're good to go. Okay. Like we talked about earlier, we always want to use products that are going to comply with the window manufacturer's best practices and also are going to be compatible with the weather resistant barrier system that we're using. And we want to ensure that we use the appropriate sealant to install that window per the manufacturer's best practices. Now there is a requirement for the sealant when it comes to Marvin windows. It is ASTM C920 NS class 25 sealant that we're going to want to use. And that's what Henry's Moist Stop sealant is. So now we've applied our sealant and we have our window in the opening. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to tack this window in place, again, two inch galvanized roof nail, and then I'm going to check for plum and square. As you can see while Rob's nailing it in, one thing we do want to ensure is when you fully fasten the flanges in onto the actual sheathing itself, you want to go every other hole all the way down all the sides of the window to ensure that it's installed properly and fastened to the wall properly. Okay, now that we've tacked the window from the exterior, we're gonna check a couple things on the inside and prepare to finish installing this window. 
you'll notice that the window has already been shimmed. I've shimmed four inches down from the top, four inches up from the bottom, 16 inches or less on center, and at each point of operation, in this case, double hung at the check rail. I've also checked for square, measuring diagonal in both directions. The other thing we need to do is check the sill for level. Nice and level. In addition to checking diagonal, we also, also want to check in at least three directions across the window to make sure nothing's bowed and everything is shimmed correctly. Nice and even all the way through. So now that we're done shimming and squaring the window, the last thing that I'm going to do is take a piece of backer rod and install that at the sill underneath the window. Once I've put that piece in place, I'm going to use the same sealant we've used throughout this installation to seal that piece of backer rod in place. And so what we're doing with the backer rod and the sealant at the sill is creating a back dam to stop any water that may reach the interior. Anything that comes in will hit that and drain back out. The last thing we're going to want to do is check for proper operation. But before we do that, we need to remove the packing blocks that we spoke about earlier. I'm going to open the sash, use the tilt latches, tilt the sash in, remove the blocks, and then we'll check for, for proper operation, the bottom and the top sash. So now that we've shimmed and squared the interior of our window, I'm going to finish nailing off the rest of this snail fin. Remember, every other hole, two inch galvanized roof nail. Okay, nails in, two inch nail. The window's all nailed off and now we're ready to make this window watertight from the exterior. With an integrated WRB system like Zip system, there's a lot less prep for that window opening like we saw in previous videos with traditional house wraps. But there are a few things that we need to make sure that we do keep in mind and we do follow. With Marvin, again, these are the corner gaskets that we wanted to make sure that we kept safe on the side. But also, don't forget, if we do lose these, we still have the ab ability to use whatever flashing tape we have on site to create the corner gaskets on site. With Marvin Elevate windows, we want to make sure that we apply the corner gaskets that are given. Now there's going to be two at the top and two at the bottom. You may notice as we apply these corner gaskets that we've rolled them onto the frame of the window about a quarter of an inch. All right, now we've applied our corner gaskets. Uh, the next step per Marvin, uh, we're going to apply a small bead of sealant at these corner gaskets. I'm going to do that now. Now that we have this window installed in the opening, nailed off, corner gaskets installed and sealed, we're ready to move on to our flashing tape. Brian, you want to talk to us about the next steps? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like with any window flashing detailing, we always want to make sure that we start from the bottom and work our way up the window to ensure that we have everything properly shingle flashed so water is able to drain down the wall assembly appropriately. Now, in some previous videos, we talked about showing an actual rain skirt along the bottom, which is a recommendation by Marvin, not an actual requirement. So in this install, we're actually just going to leave the bottom flange opened to allow any potential moisture that gets in to escape through that opening on the bottom itself. Now, one thing to keep in mind is even though that there's not a rain skirt there, Marvin specifically does not want to use a fully adhered tape like Zip Systems tape across the bottom flange of the window at all. We always want to allow any potential moisture that gets into the opening to escape out and not trap it in that rough opening itself. All right, first what we want to do is make sure that we apply the legs, both left and right legs, of the actual window itself. We want to extend a minimum two inches up above the top flange of the window. And what's very important with Marvin, we want to ensure that the, the window and door flashing runs one quarter inch up onto the actual window frame itself. If you look at the actual Marvin window and the flange, the flange is applied to the window and gives us a really good mark to work off of to ensure that we have that quarter inch onto the actual window frame itself. So now we have our zip flashing tape applied to the window. 
Brian is going to go ahead and roll it to make sure we have that good adhesion to our WRB system. Great. Now that we have our window fully installed, you can see it's completely weather tight from the exterior of the building. One thing to keep in mind while we're on job sites and we're choosing our weather resistant barrier and our window manufacturers, we always want to make sure that we're sticking with a system of products. Whether it's traditional house wrap, fully adhered house wrap, or integrated WRB systems like a zip system here, make sure that we consistently use a system of products and ensure that we follow install best practices so when we walk off a job, we know it's installed and going to be warranted and we have peace of mind when we're done. Thank you all for watching. We hope that you found this informative and check back for more videos like this from Ring Zen.